Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm Spencer. I'm an industrial designer. I've been doing this for a long time now, over a decade. And what I mean by this is drawing, designing, and making stuff. So if this is your first time here, I want you to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts because we go live three times a week. In fact, if you're watching this and it is Wednesday, we'll be going live later today at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, 5 p.m. Pacific. So watch out for that alert. Tap the bell, make sure you don't miss that. You can also come find me on the socials at sketchaday.com on Instagram or visit me on Twitter at Daily Sketches. Got a little mixed up there. So today I'm sharing with you a demo I recorded a while back and it's very technical in Illustrator. I recorded this when I was teaching a class, design class on basic visual communication. And I do believe that to draw correctly, you have to understand kind of the mechanics behind how things work and why they work that way. So buckle up, <laughs> sit down, and hopefully you enjoy this very long and very technical demo about one and two point perspective. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'm sure I've even made mistakes along the way. So if you have any corrections or thoughts, feel free to share those below. But as always, have fun. If you need ideas on materials, you can use the links in the video description to check those out. So I hope you guys enjoy and we'll see you next time right here on Sketch Day. Okay, if you're watching this, I'm gonna assume that you've spent a little bit of time working in Adobe Illustrator and are generally familiar with the tools of the program. I uh, will be going over just a quick well, hopefully quick demo of one point and two point perspective as well as multiplying a cube in perspective. So to start, as I'm an illustrator here, I'm gonna do something which is hide my artboard. You don't have to hide your artboard, but I kind of like to for the purposes of this um, exercise. If you don't, oh, <laughs> let me backtrack there. To hide your artboard, you can go to view, hide artboards or control or command shift H. If you're on a Mac, it's command shift H. If you're on a PC, it's control shift H. In any case, I'll work with the artboards on just to uh, do this demo. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a horizon line. So I have a single line by selecting the line tool and drawing that line. And the next thing I'm gonna do is pick a station point and vanishing point. Now the station point and vanishing point are gonna extend downward toward the bottom of your page. You can pick any length you want, but the next few steps are important. So what I'm gonna do next is by picking the oval tool, if I hold shift, it'll maintain the proportion of the circle. Now this is with just holding shift as a modifier key. If I hold alt, it'll change the center of the circle to that point that I first clicked on. And if I drag down to the bottom of this line, slightly move to the right or the left, it'll expand that circle out. Now what this has done is it's marked a point on my horizon line here, denoted by that circle. And I also have a point at the end of that line. So right here is my station point or SP. And this other point is my measuring point or MP. Over here where I started, in fact, I'm going to just shorten this line to intersect with my horizon light, horizon line rather. This is my vanishing point. Now the other important thing is we need to establish a cone of vision. So with the rotate tool selected over here on my toolbar, I click that and if I were to just click and drag it would rotate this line. Now I can change the center rotation by clicking anywhere. So if I click over here, I'm not rotating around that point. I'm gonna click on the end of this line. Not only that, but after I click on that point, I'm going, oh, let me backtrack. <laughs> I'm gonna hold Alt, click on that point. It's gonna pop up with this box. Now a cone of vision is about 60 degrees. So I need to rotate this line 30 degrees on either side. So if I hit 30, and select preview, okay, you'll notice that that line's rotated 30 degrees to the left. If I hit a copy, the dialog box will close and now I have a duplicate of that line. I can repeat the process. I'm gonna choose negative 30 degrees, hit copy, and now I have two lines that are describing 
my cone of vision. Now, if I pick both lines, hold shift, and using the center anchor point of this bounding box, while holding shift and drag out, this is my cone of vision. And just to make these lines a little different, up here on my menu bar with some additional buttons, there's stroke. Sometimes it's also in your palette over here, but I'm gonna just hit stroke here and under types, there's a little box that says dash line. So if I pick that, it's gonna make my line appear dashed. I can even change the stroke weight so that these lines are a little lighter. So that's my cone of vision. Now that I've established this, I can draw two lines any degree apart. Okay, these are my first two vanishing lines. If you want, you could even start with just a simple horizontal line but the effect is the same. I would draw two lines back to my vanishing point here. Now, it's, if I'm drawing a cube, the vertical and horizontal lines of this one point perspective cube are gonna be equal in length or appear to be because I'm essentially drawing on my picture plane. So this would be the face of my cube. I can draw these lines back to the vanishing point as well. I'm just gonna pick these and let's go to window, stroke. So now my stroke window appears over here. Let's just drag this because I'm gonna use this a few times. I can change my line weight a little lighter so you know that those are vanishing lines. Now, <clears throat> to get the measurement of how far back in perspective the step goes, I'm gonna draw from this lower left corner of my square up to my measuring point, okay? And what this will do, I can even use my rectangle tool here, starting at this point while holding shift, draw a square until I intersect with that corner vanishing point. Okay, so what I have done here is I've drawn a cube in one point perspective. Now, if you've done your construction lines and stylized them and you wanna do a final drawing on top of that, what I like to do is make a new layer, lock the first layer, layer one. You could even rename this to construction by double clicking on the word layer one. You'll be able to type in a new name. Same with layer two. I can call this final drawing and that will be my layer. So by hitting this little blank space next to the eyeball, it's going to lock the layer. So no matter what I click on, I can't select anything. So now I'm going to draw a rectangle here and a rectangle back here. And I'm gonna give both of these similar line weight of half a point. Okay. And let's actually unlock this layer. I'm gonna pick these lines and just make them a quarter of a millimeter or a quarter of a point. Okay, so turn this layer back on. So I've got one rectangle, two rectangles. So on my stroke, Let's make this half a point. And now, if I turn this layer off, you'll see what I'm left with right there. So now I need two lines, or not two lines, some lines rather, between my corners. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So this will actually give me an opportunity to talk about something. So you may notice as you're doing your perspective drawing that sometimes things don't exactly line up. There is a way to get these perfect. If you go to view, overprint, is it over, uh, outline, pardon me, view outline with control Y, it turns off all the strokes and the heavy stuff in Illustrator. So remember I had this square in the back and I was kind of eyeballing where it intersected. Looks like it hasn't quite intersected with my 
vanishing point line or vanishing line. So I'm going to drag this until it looks like it intersects there. Now I can take this line and correct that little mistake. Same thing here. Take this line I just drew, drag it over and it may not correctly line up probably because this line as I've drawn it isn't lining up somewhere. And even then Illustrator isn't totally perfect. So it's important just to try and get it as close as you can. Yeah, everything else looks good. Okay. So on this lower corner here, I can tweak that as well. If I turn that off, you'll see kind of where things shift a little bit. So there is my one point perspective cube. I'm going to group this. And if you want, for example, I can take my pen tool. Take my pen tool and draw around the perimeter of my drawing, completing the shape and adjust the stroke on this. So now I have a nice thick outline with construction lines and uh, some depth being shown there. Okay, so that is one point perspective.